Okay, what I have here is a RC circuit problem hooked up to a DC battery. We'll have 8 volts, 2 ohm resistor here, 6 ohms, 2 ohms, and 2 ohms, and then a couple of undefined capacitors. And so the question for this example problem is what is the current through the circuit right after we close the switch? So we're going to close our switch and start to charge up our capacitors. So we'll go ahead and make that connection. Then we're going to ask what is the current going to be through our circuit at infinity after the switches have been closed a very long time. Then I want to know what the voltage is going to be on this capacitor here and what the voltage is going to be on this capacitor here. And we'll see why it doesn't matter what those values of the capacitances happen to be. So we start off first by saying what happens when we first close the switch. When we first close the switch, we replace both capacitors with wires. So we could uh, simulate a wire go across this gap here and a wire across this gap here. And as a result, we're going to have 8 volts here. And we'll have 8 volts here. And now because this is a wire, we're going to have 8 volts over here. And we'll have 8 volts over here. And, oh my gosh, what else? Well, this is a wire 2, so we're going to have 8 volts over here. And all the way over here, we're going to have 8 volts. So what does that tell us about how much current runs through this resistor, and this resistor, and this resistor? Because we say that V drop equals IR. Since there is no voltage drop across this resistor, or this resistor, or this resistor, no current will run through any of those three resistors. So essentially, when we first close the switch, the two capacitors act like a short circuit, so we could essentially make believe there's a wire just going straight down. Or you can go all the way around if you want to take the round trip. But really all we have to then worry about then is the 2 ohm resistor. So the net result is that our current going to be given by V over R. And in this case, we have 8 volts here, 0 volts here. And so the net result is 8 volts divided by 2 ohms, and therefore we get 4 amps as soon as we close the switch. Then after a long time, we know that the capacitors will fill up, so we can get rid of our short circuit here now. And we'll get rid of this line right here. And no longer will we have 8 volts up here. Well, no, we'll still have 8 volts here. But we're not going to have 8 volts on the bottom anymore. Okay? So after a long time, the capacitors are full. And so what do we do when we have full capacitors? We yank them out of the circuit, essentially, because they're going to assume the voltage such that if they were there, it would have a voltage that we could just pull it out and we would not have any difference noticeable. So let's just go ahead and cut that capacitor out. And now since we have nothing where these circuits can complete throughout the rest of it, this whole branch, we can maybe just go ahead and, and cut it there too. Just to remind us that now the only part of the circuit that matters is the left loop. And so after a long time, our current it's going to end up being V over R once again, and in this case, 8 volts divided by 6 ohms and 2 ohms, or 8 ohms, and that gives us 1 amp of current after a very long time. So then my next question is, what happens to the voltage across C1, and what happens to the voltage across C2? And so again, remember our approximation where we say we can yank the capacitor out as if it's not even there, but in reality it is there, but it assumes a voltage such that we can ignore that part of the circuit. And so for ignoring that part of the circuit, what are we saying about the voltage across the two resistors? If we're able to just dis disconnect this part of the circuit, we're saying that the voltage across these resistors has to be the same. So therefore, the voltage here at the bottom, VB, and the voltage at the top of each of these two resistors has to be equal. So we can say that VT is going to be equal to VB, 
and that value is going to be 0 volts in this case. And in reality, it's not going to be 0 volts because we're, we're technically we're connected here. And so when we say after a long time we have four, uh, or two resistors in our circuit and one amp running through that, we can go ahead and label what our voltages are going to be. And so we're going to have 8 volts here, 8 volts here, 8 volts there, and now we're going to lose voltage across this resistor because we have 1 amp of current running through it. So 1 amp times 6, if we use our V drop equals IR, I have 1 amp, 6 ohms, I'm going to lose 6 volts across this resistor, or I'll have 2 volts remaining at the bottom. So I have two volts here. I can then go ahead and say, well, I'll have two volts here, two volts here, and two volts here. And then remember where I said when I had this disconnected, I would have zero volts across my uh, resistors over here. Well, in reality, it's going to be two volts will be on the bottom because I still have two volts here because I have them connected by wires. But because I say after a long time, it's like yanking my capacitor out, that means no current is going to be flowing through this part of the circuit. So as a result, no current is flowing through these resistors. So that tells me I must have two volts on the top of my resistors, like I stated earlier. And so therefore, I have two volts here, two volts here, two volts here, two volts here. I no longer have the eight volts that I had earlier labeled. And so what do I have across this resistor? no voltage difference. So my voltage across C2, VC2, is going to be zero volts. But what do I have across this capacitor up here? Well, I have two volts, two volts, two volts, two volts, two volts here. So my voltage across my C1 capacitor is simply going to be six volts after a very long time. The same that we have across this resistor we get that equivalent across this capacitor as well, such that no more current were to flow. If we happen to have some kind of voltage on this capacitor, and let's just say it was 3 volts, then we'd have to have 3 volts everywhere else along this wire that's connecting it. And so at one moment in time, when we had 3 volts as an example, we'd see that we'd lose some voltage across here, some current would flow through here, and so this would discharge till eventually it did reach a value of 2 volts at the very end. And at that point, our circuit will be stable. And that answers all four of our questions. Well, what happens at the beginning and what happens at the end after our switch is closed. Then you can ask, well, what happens when I open it back up? And the result of that will be this capacitor will discharge through these resistors, and eventually it will end up with no voltage at all as well.